Today, we are looking at this week's massive crypto crash and why we might see another big crash on Monday. I'm dropping a lot of alpha today, guys, so make sure you stay tuned. Oh, and I'm also doing a giveaway because, well, why not? I love giving back to you guys, so I'm doing a $500 giveaway at some point in this video. Watch all the way through to find out how you can win. Now, confidence in crypto feels like it's at an all-time low right now. The fear and greed index is flashing red and people are quitting crypto in droves. I saw a really interesting tweet this week from Arkham Intel. Genesis sold, Jump sold, Grayscale sold, Germany sold, and Mt. Gox sold, but BlackRock bought. What does this tell us? Look at Jump Crypto. They are a massive Chicago-based trading firm that many people consider some of the smartest people in crypto. They had a fire sale a few weeks ago, but when they were selling, BlackRock was buying. Like I've been saying for ages, when institutions like BlackRock got into crypto, they would trick everyone into selling. And here we are. Everyone says crypto is the most manipulated market in the world, but crypto natives are amateurs at market manipulation. BlackRock and their kind have been manipulating financial markets since before most crypto natives were born. They will trick everyone into selling in order to quench their insatiable thirst for money. The game has leveled up this cycle, but I'm not giving them my crypto. Are you giving them yours? Drop a comment down below and let me know what you think of BlackRock and if you're giving them your crypto. So today I'll break down everything that happened this week, including some of the nasty tricks market manipulators have pulled to get people to sell. And just because I love you guys, I'm going to show you how I'm preparing for their next potential strike on Monday. But before we get started, here is a quick reminder that this is not financial advice and I am not a financial advisor. This video is not intended for UK consumers. Don't invest unless you prepare to lose all the money you invest. Crypto is a high risk investment and largely unregulated. You are unlikely to be protected if something goes wrong. If you're not in the UK, let's get started. The past week in crypto has seen some pretty big headlines. Some small flash crashes in the crypto market that could have big ramifications for your bags. But we also have some bullish news that really gives us some insight into the next few months of the crypto market. But let's start by looking at what's been moving some of the altcoins in the space because we've seen some wild moves. The big piece of news this week was the CEO of Telegram, Pavel Durov, being arrested in France. He's currently out on a 5 million euro bail. But the reason this was big for crypto is the relation between Telegram and the Ton network. Ton has integrated heavily with Telegram and with the arrest of Durov, we saw Ton's price tank from around $6.80 down to almost 5 But the bad news for Ton didn't end there, with several network outages bringing the network to a halt. Now, all of this isn't the end for Ton, but it should serve as a warning to you guys that you shouldn't put all your crypto eggs in one basket. Random news events like the CEO being arrested aren't predictable. And the other big reason you should be careful with your bags is what I mentioned at the start, with the potential market manipulation occurring in crypto at the moment. The low liquidity we're seeing in the market right now isn't something exchanges like to see. And if you've stuck around these past few months, you probably feel like we're in a bear market. Things are super quiet, but the reality is we are seeing Bitcoin bounce around from the 60s and the high 50s, which is actually a pretty solid price range. But these summer months are always quietest across the markets. People are on holiday, they aren't trading, and we've seen some price dips in recent months which have caused a bunch of people to panic sell or even have their positions liquidated. The most recent example was this Tuesday with Bitcoin's price plummeting from around $62,000 down to $58,000. Notice anything about when this happened? It happened in what's called the dead zone of trading. This is the time when no major markets are trading, so after the New York close and before the Japan markets open. This is where institutions like BlackRock can influence the markets in a big way. 
So what we could be seeing in the charts on Bitcoin right now is market manipulation by the big boy institutions. So what do you guys think? Are these moves manipulated by big institutions or is it just normal market behavior? Tell me what you think below. I want to hear your thoughts. You need to be alert when market conditions are like this, especially when the bull run is just around the corner. Losing your capital before it takes off will be something you regret for a long time. One thing you can do to protect yourself is using a VPN. This will protect you on public Wi-Fi's across the globe, whether you're on the move or at home. It's a really essential part of every crypto investor's kit. And I've got a killer deal for you guys right now with NordVPN. You can get a discount, multiple months free, and even an eSIM deal. Please guys, don't put off securing your crypto. I have seen too many horror stories of people having their entire capital wiped out. This is a really quick and easy way for you to secure yourself. So make sure you do it before you have any regrets. Now, one area of the altcoin market that has been seeing some strong performance are meme coins. Don't get me wrong, this is a volatile space in crypto, so there have been both big moves to the upside and big moves to the downside for meme coins. But it's fair to say that this is where a lot of the action's happening. That's in part due to the fact that most people that are active in crypto right now are the true crypto community, like you and me. But we also saw some moves in the AI space this week. A bit of a mixed bag, to be honest. Nvidia earnings were released, which saw their revenue come in at $10.32 billion, a massive 171% increase from the year before. But this was actually lower than expected, which caused Nvidia to lose value by around eight points. People's expectations with Nvidia's earnings are always high because quite frankly, they typically smash their numbers. So to see negativity around their 171% increase is a bit crazy, but hey. Nvidia have clearly had a huge year, so expectations from retail are similarly huge. Now, that being said, there is still huge demand for their chips, and we've seen the rise of Nvidia have a direct knock-on effect in the AI crypto space. There's some bullish news with OpenAI, as they are in talks to raise more funds that will value the company over $100 billion. So it's safe to say that AI has had a strong week. This could be signaling strong things for the AI space in the bull run ahead, with demand still persisting for the AI space and infrastructure for it. In other bullish news, Trump has announced plans to make the US the crypto capital of the world, further bringing the crypto community into his camp. Trump continues to show that he is pro-crypto with a stark difference to the current stance of the SEC. After some bullish progress for crypto against the SEC, this week saw the SEC threaten to sue OpenSea, claiming that NFTs are securities. Who knows what will happen there? The SEC have certainly lost a lot of ground recently in their fight to class cryptos as securities, but they are clearly not out for the count. The political landscape with the elections looming closer will have huge ramifications for crypto. So it's becoming essential for you to keep one eye on the race, no matter where you are in the world. So the past week has seen some pretty interesting moves. Potential market manipulations and the jailing of the Telegram CEO are developments that are keeping people on their toes. It's anyone's guess as to who is behind these movements within the market, but they're certainly impacting retail investors. Whilst the week has seen Bitcoin's price continue to range, the overall sentiment for the long-term outlook of crypto has actually remained quite high. With the election coming closer each week, how the candidates position themselves is becoming more important to track. We have a huge week coming up for the markets, guys. The first week of the month is always exciting as the market eagerly awaits the non-farm employment change numbers from the US, which is also known as the NFP report. This monthly economic indicator measures the change in the number of employed people in the US, excluding people like farm workers and government employees. This is one of the leading indicators for the health of the labor market, which is important to investors. Weak employment growth suggests a faltering labor market, which can lead to lower inflation and prompt central banks to cut interest rates. And that's what it all comes down to, interest rates. Because in a few weeks, the FOMC will decide whether or not to cut interest rates. The NFP is one of the many indicators they consider when making this decision, but it is one of the more important ones. 
Right now, everyone expects a cut, but it's all but confirmed. However, if the NFP numbers surprise us, then who knows, they may hold off from cutting rates, and that would be bad for crypto prices. We want interest rates to be lower so that money flows back into high-risk assets like crypto, which everyone expects will pump our alt bags. One more thing you need to know about NFP week is that historically there is lower market volume leading up to the NFP. Because everybody is anticipating the NFP report to plan their next move, there aren't as many people trading, which means less volume. And this is important because tomorrow is a bank holiday for our friends in the US and Canada. They're going to be enjoying Labor Day. With US traders taking a day off, we'll see lower volume tomorrow than usual. So we're going to have a low volume day on an already low volume week. This doubling up makes Monday extremely dangerous. I know that when I say lower volume, you might think that it just means boring markets, but no. Remember how I said that last week's crash happened during the lowest volume period when US traders clocked off work and traders in Asia were still having breakfast? The dead zone. This is because low volume can lead to big moves. There is a huge danger of liquidation cascades happening in low volume periods. This is because in these periods, fewer transactions are needed to move price significantly. This makes it a perfect time for market manipulators like BlackRock to strike and cause massive dumps. It doesn't mean that they will 100% strike, but it is the perfect opportunity for them to strike. So I would be very careful on Monday because you don't want a nasty bear candle surprise. You've been warned, guys. Also, on Monday, Harris and Biden are making a joint appearance in Pennsylvania. While this will probably be a minor thing, it's still worth noting, because if Harris makes a particularly good showing, it might lead to fears that she will beat Trump, which is bad for crypto. So let's talk about the rest of the week and do this giveaway that I promised. Monday through to Friday next week is one of Asia's biggest crypto conferences, Korea Blockchain Week. This matters because there will be major speakers like Arthur Hayes, Richard Teng, Vitalik, and more. Also, major crypto projects might make big announcements that could cause massive pumps. A lot of it will be live streamed, so if you have time, catch the streams to get any alpha early. On Tuesday, we have the ISM Manufacturing PMI. This is a monthly indicator that measures the health of the US manufacturing sector, which is an indicator of the overall economic health. Basically, above 50 indicates growth, and below 50 indicates contraction, which is bad. Last month's reading was 46.8, which is really bad. Much like the NFP, the low manufacturing PMI would be one factor considered in a rate cut. This coming Wednesday, Trump will be speaking in Pennsylvania. This is important because he might mention the crypto space, of course. And on Thursday, we have the services PMI, which is the same for the services sector. Last month, this one was 51.4, which is still great. Let's see if it dips below 50 this month. The reason all these numbers matter, NFP and the PMIs, is because if they're unexpectedly super positive, Powell might not lower rates in September, which will probably take Bitcoin back down to the mid 50s. Whilst this is extremely unlikely, if I've learned one thing in the past few years, it's that financial markets can surprise you. So be ready for surprises, especially on Monday, since it's the perfect opportunity for BlackRock and their friends to try and steal your crypto. Now, the giveaway that I promised. If you want to win, drop a comment below saying BlackRock won't take my crypto. I'll pick two winners at random next Friday. Let's go. Now, I want you to do me a small favor. If you liked this video, let me know. I've never done this sort of content and honestly, guys, it's really important to me that you find these videos useful. After all, I make these videos for you. So was this useful? Let me know. If you want to stay completely up to date with my complete crypto portfolio for this coming bull run, then check out my breakdown video right here. This portfolio has some big changes, including meme coins, so you don't want to miss it. But until next time, guys, remember, trade smart, don't be a dumbass. I love you all. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.